let's stay together. Yeah, let's stay together. Let's try and have a day where nobody dies. I mean, I'd really enjoy not having to bury one of my friends. That'd be, that'd be great. Subtlety is apparently not in the vocabulary of some filmmakers. Fire the laser cannon, robot. Fire! Yeah! Ha-ha! Welcome to WatchMojo.com. Would you like to help administer some medicine to the patient? And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shameless mockbusters. Dex Muldoon, you are under arrest. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at those movies that we find were blatantly trying to ride on the success of big blockbusters. Since our focus is on mockbusters, meaning low-budget films that copied a major film's title and themes, we're excluding distinctive rip-offs like Mac and Me. Number 10. Atlantic Rim Atlantic, Pacific, what's the difference? Thus, we have Atlantic Rim, clearly a derivative of Guillermo del Toro's blockbuster Pacific Rim. With both films relying on the idea of humans piloting giant robots and battling giant monsters. Take that! Come on! You'll handle more! <laughs> This time around, however, the robots are designed for deep sea missions rather than specifically being designed for combating kaiju. We jammed that sucker! Oh, yeah. Yeah. We jammed it! Woo. Yeah. It's certainly a novel idea, but Atlantic Rim wears its origins on its sleeve. First round's on me, son. Jesus, you know how to make a mess. Number 9. Bound. Um, excuse me? For every high-budget production about BDSM, there's a cheap knockoff. Such is the case with Bound, the story of real estate broker Michelle entering a submissive relationship with Ryan, a younger man. In case you were wondering about the timing of this one, the film was released a month before Fifty Shades of Grey, the major motion picture tackling similar subject matter. No, you don't want to be spanked, or no, you don't want to be spanked by me. In fact, Bound was relying on the association to a degree. Its tagline was no grey, only black and white. How subtle. Number 8. Sunday School Musical. Hey, drop that beat. Drop that beat. <laughs> all right. Drop all that right. Beat. Okay. Here we go. It, it, uh, rock, rock the beat. <laughs> it's the start of something new or something derivative and without shame, apparently. I think we may have an argument. No matter how you feel about Disney Channel original movies, taking such a film and merely changing the focus to a church choir seems questionable at best. And if you didn't want to leave, then you would try to stay. Yet that's Sunday School Musical in a nutshell, the tale of teenage churchgoers entering a song and dance competition in order to save their church. Well, the time has come to announce the winner. We'll be taking home a prize of $10,000. The film's producer has said that the movie was made as an explicitly Christian version of High School Musical, based on a suggestion from a marketing seminar. Number 7. AVH, Alien vs. Hunter Get off him, you big dog! Ah! 20th Century Fox must have been fuming back in the day. <laughs> After all, when your latest crossover film, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, is still a week from release, do you really want a mockbuster being released to steal your glory? AVH borrows many elements from Fox's movie. The suburban setting, the conflict between a brutal space hunter and a vicious alien, humans caught in the middle. Tammy, shut up! The plagiarism is thoroughly apparent, right down to the mockbuster's title. Come on, let's go. Number 6. Snakes on a Train 
This is Southern Pacific Desert Railroad. Does anybody read me? Replace the plane with a train. It'll be a whole new movie. No! No, my face! My face! That may very well have been the thinking that film studio and distributor The Asylum used to justify their 2006 film Snakes on a Train, a riff on the then upcoming movie Snakes on a Plane. Enough is enough! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! The Asylum's project, like its bigger budget source, focuses on hundreds of snakes being unleashed aboard a fast-moving mode of transport, tormenting the passengers. However, in this incarnation, we get heavy helpings of gore and a woman transforming into a giant snake. Yes, really. Number 5. Android Cop Affirmative. We probably wouldn't buy this, not even for a dollar. And why would you do that? Whatever you may think about the 2014 remake of the classic action film Robocop, it wasn't asking for imitators like Android Cop. A film by the Asylum, it pits an LAPD detective and his new robot partner against corrupt officers as they escort the mayor's daughter out of an irradiated area of California. Though the setting has shifted from Detroit to Los Angeles, Android Cop remains tied to its source material's focus on action and the challenges of working with a robot companion. Let's go. Number 4. Transmorphers Robots in disguise, or robots rampaging Earth and enslaving humanity. The plan was to build an ultimate soldier, a, a machine to fight the machines. Stronger than any human, full of resolve, averse to fear. As a machine, it would be impervious to their brain scans. Despite the distinction in premise, Transmorphers is a clear-as-day attempt to piggyback on the success of director Michael Bay's adaptation of Transformers. Transmorphers focuses on the struggles of a human resistance group battling giant alien robots. The most significant difference from Transformers We lost a great comrade is that the film's events occur centuries after the robots conquered humanity, a story later documented in the 2005 prequel, Transmorphers, Fall of Man. No one in the military even questioned the fact that you were the first human being found above ground in over 100 years. Number 3. Paranormal Entity David? This one makes us feel a bit uncomfortable, to be honest. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Come here, come here, come here. Sam, come here, come here. Released as a cheap copycat of Paranormal Activity. What are you talking about? I don't know. Feel it. This 2009 film by The Asylum uses the former's documentary style filmmaking and low budget setup to tell the story of a woman being sexually assaulted and killed by supernatural forces. This thing just, just dragged right off the bed. Samantha Finley and her family seek to investigate what they believe is a demon haunting them, only for events to spiral out of control. Jesus Christ, Samantha! Any way the audience looks at it, this is paranormal activity redone with a much more grim outcome. Samantha! 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 Number 2. Metal Man I am Metal Man. Or rather, our hero Kyle Finn is Metal Man, whose super-powered metal suit comes in handy when battling ninjas and a terror robot. And Finn's rival Reed. Admittedly a solid premise, it nevertheless comes under scrutiny when one considers a single detail. Metal Man was released the same year as Marvel Studios' Iron Man.
Yes, this mockbuster exists to take advantage of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's first film. Metal Man is even designed similarly to Iron Man, to hammer the point home. You should have the power of full invisibility. All you should have to do is say, full stealth. Full stealth. Before we unveil our number one pick. Forgive me, Stella. But in the beginning, I didn't know whose side you were on. Here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Uh, what have you done, you clumsy idiot? Huh? Ah, it wasn't me! It wasn't me! Uh, Tonight you die. Jim, what are you talking about? Tonight we drink. Let's lock in these controls and move it out, quick. Right. Let's go. Number one, Almighty Thor. Protect it. Keep it safe from Loki. This one's the cream of the crop, so to speak. With the success of Marvel Studios films, cash-grabbing knockoffs were to be expected. Hence the existence of this mockbuster. I am not leaving this earth until I have saved it or death takes me. Almighty Thor tells the tale of a young Thor, who in this version is an inexperienced warrior, as he seeks justice for the death of his brother and father. It's Loki I want to avenge your death, my brothers! Making the Norse god of thunder the hero is blatant enough, but add the trickster god Loki as Thor's mortal foe, and you have a clear-cut grab at the money made by Marvel's own Thor movie. Thor! I can hear you! Why delay the inevitable? Do you agree with our list? No! What mockbusters do you feel are the most shameless? With your help, we can still find the Count's Phantom Planet. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, it's done. It's happened.